Welcome to this podcast on the social implications in computing. This will involve a discussion about questions related to the legal and ethical issues in computing, as well as the impact on society, the environment, and the way we do things. These topics are from question 7 of the 2023 Computer Applications Technology or CAT theory exam from November. There are three ways that you can engage with the content of this podcast. If you want to test your knowledge, then download the questions first covered in the video by getting the PDF that's in the video description link. Then attempt these questions and then once you've done that, come back and compare your questions by listening to the answers that are discussed. Or if you want to use the podcast to learn new information, then first listen to the discussion, then download the questions that we mentioned earlier, and then test yourself to see how well you remember those answers from the discussion. Or you can simply enjoy the discussion about the social implications in computing and learn more about its impact on a society. So let's hear what these podcasters have to say about these social implications. Welcome to the deep dive. Ever stop and uh, really think about how much computers and the internet have changed things? Oh, completely. Especially if you've basically grown up with it all. It's just everywhere. It really is. So today, we're going to dive into some of the social sides of all this tech, the implications. That's the plan. Yeah, our mission here is to unpack some key aspects, especially relevant if you're studying computers in high school. Okay. We'll touch on, you know, the global community connection, those pesky internet attacks, keeping data safe, mm -hmm. what network admins do, and even, like, what happens if the power cuts out. We've got some solid sources guiding us. Great. Let's start big picture then. Right. The global community. How has this tech impacted it? Our sources list quite a few things. Right. Well, think about travel first. It's so much easier now, isn't it? Totally. Booking flights, seeing places online. Exactly. And communication. Yes. Talking to someone on the other side of the world is, well, almost trivial now. Yeah, like they're next door. Yeah. And getting news or finding information. It's instant. And learning. So many new ways to learn, online courses, different resources. It's uh, transformed education. Absolutely. And business too, right? Companies going global. Even healthcare is changing with rote consultation. Definitely. And there are environmental points too. Maybe less driving, less flying, less printing needed for some things. Plus working from home. Telecommuting, yeah. And finding people with shared interests in virtual communities. It's all built this, well, more interconnected world. Boosted economies, too. It's a lot to think about. Which of those impacts do you notice most yourself worth considering? Okay, let's switch gears slightly. Internet attacks. It's uh, more complicated than just viruses now. Oh, much more. There's a whole menu of threats out there. Let's maybe pick two. How about um, denial of service? A Doris attack. Right. What's that exactly? So imagine you're trying to use a website, maybe your school portal or something, and it just won't load. It's being flooded with useless traffic, basically, to overwhelm it and knock it offline. Uh, okay. So it denies you the service. Precisely. Yeah. And another common one is phishing. Those fake emails. Exactly. Or messages. They look legit, trying to trick you into giving up passwords or bank details, that kind of thing. You really have to be careful what you click on. Super important to be aware of that stuff. Which brings us neatly to, well... Protecting our data. What is data protection, fundamentally? It's pretty straightforward, actually. It's just about safeguarding your information, making sure people who aren't supposed to see it can't access it, like locking your digital doors. Okay. And how do we do that beyond, say, not leaving your laptop open? What's one key method? Well, a really crucial one is using strong passwords and unique ones for different accounts. Ah, password seems basic, but still so important. It really is. A good, complex, password-long mix of characters is your first line of defense for so many things online. Don't reuse them. Good advice. And then you have things like firewalls. Okay, what's a firewall? So imagine a firewall as like a security guard standing at the entrance to your computer system. Okay. Carefully checking everyone who tries to enter. So like a digital bouncer. Yeah, exactly. It blocks any unauthorized access attempts, keeping your data safe from intruders. I like that analogy. Yeah. Um, okay, so then what about those VPN things? VPNs. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah. But I don't really understand what they do. So a VPN creates a secure tunnel for your internet traffic. Okay which is especially useful when you're using public Wi-Fi. Like at a coffee shop or something. Yeah, like okay. So imagine you're sending a postcard with all your personal information written on it. Okay. A VPN is like putting that postcard in a sealed envelope. 
Okay. Ensuring that no one can peek at the contents along the way. So it's like a secret pathway for your data. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so who manages all this security stuff on a bigger scale, like at school or a company? Network administrators. Yep. The network admins, they're yeah. kind of the guardians of the network. What are their main jobs for security? Well, they do a lot. They have to keep track of all the computers and software on the network. Very important. Keeping inventory, basically. Exactly. And making sure only approved software gets installed and kept up to date. Outdated stuff could be a security hole. Makes sense. Then there's managing who gets access to what user accounts, passwords, access rights, maybe blocking USB drives to stop data walking out the door. Right. Control. They also often create the rules, the acceptable use policy, or AUP telling everyone how they should use the network responsibly. Ah, the AUP. We've all had to sign those. Probably. And critically, they handle backups, making sure data can be recovered if something goes wrong. So I'm sure. Super important for keeping things running smoothly and safely. You can see why they're essential. Yeah. Okay, last point. Power cuts. Unexpected blackouts. How do you stop losing all your work? Yeah, that's frustrating. Two main things help. First, autosave. Most programs have it now. Just got to make sure it's turned on. Right. It saves your work automatically every few minutes. Lifesaver. Second, especially for more critical setups, is a UPS. A UPS. Uninterruptible power supply. It's basically a battery backup. If the power cuts out, the UPS kicks in instantly and gives you, you know, maybe 10, 15 minutes of power. Enough time to save everything properly and shut down. Exactly. It avoids that sudden data loss. Some places might even have inverters or solar backups for longer outages, but a UPS is pretty common. Got it. So auto save and a UPS. Good practical tips. Definitely useful. Okay, so we've covered quite a bit today how technology connects us globally, the kinds of threats out there. Uh huh. Protecting data, the role of network admins, and preventing data loss from power failures. It's all sort of woven together, isn't it? It absolutely is. And maybe a final thought to leave you with. Yeah. Looking ahead, say 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. How do you think these social impacts of computing will evolve? What new challenges or maybe opportunities might pop up? Hmm. That's a big question. It is. Something to keep pondering as you use all this tech every day. It's your world being shaped by it. Just a reminder that we've got tons of more content on our YouTube channel, at Missile Computer Terms, which will help you learn these concepts. So make sure that you're a subscriber, make sure you share with your friends, and make sure you follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do the long way, do the Mr. Long way.